over the known world. The peoples of Europe, Asia, Africa bow to Rome's power and influence. Rome prevailed and shall continue to prevail throughout the centuries. For when Rome is no more, there will be no more world. Caesar. Caesar. The men. I must have the men. They must send me the legions. Valeria. The sea is crossed. The gods are angry. Caesar is favored by the gods. But I wonder how long I will continue to be. The tranquil sky is a favorable sign. It's the heart, my friend that has doubts and is never really at peace. Laurel is the symbol of glory. Laurel is the symbol of glory, a crown that's worthy of Caesar. Will you wear it one day? When I am old and tired, Caius Opius? Caius Opius has arrived. Then I must go to him, let the games begin. We'll join you shortly. Kai, welcome, Kai. Welcome. Much happiness and many victories, Caesar. Many victories? Over men and women. <laughs> Caius, old friend. Caesar's victories depend on the Senate's reaction. What news? I haven't been able to defeat all the enemies of Caesar. They so outnumber Caesar's friends? No. But they include that great orator, Cicero. Cicero. Cicero, my friend and my enemy. The father of our country. 
A senile old man surrounded by a senate full of the same, each clinging to the other like a gathering of old women. Oh, I jest, Caius. He's a good citizen and a good orator, but he has no vision. He's blind like the others, blind. Naturally, they refuse me the legions I ask. To be brief, Caesar, they intend to discuss the question, but they will never approve your expedition to Britain. You have war inside you, Caesar. Cicero and his senile senator. Frightened of Caesar's ambition. Blind fools, can't they see? Don't they know that my ambition is their ambition, the ambition of Rome? I will go to Britain. And Caesar shall have his legions all the same. Caius. My friend Caius. You must be weary. Somewhat. I journeyed day and night. I was afraid you might have sailed before I arrived. Perhaps it's destiny. Or the will of the gods. Maybe that's what made me pause. <laughs> oh, don't be impertinent with the gods, Caius. Never. Anyway, I had this strong feeling I should remain in Gaul this time. For what reason? I know not, Caius. I do know that Caesar's impertinence is confined to man. Always pay strict attention to the gods. But now I'm going to Britain. I've decided. Again. Come. Come. Sisterses that the Gaul will beat the German. All right. A hundred sisterses, I accept. <laughs> Grant you your liberty. What are you called? Vercingetorix.
I have fought corruption in senatorial tribunals all my life. Now I ask you to help me, Pompey. Like yourself, I was not appointed, but freely elected, Pompey. You know that I share your views, Caesar. Your battle is also mine. Yes, Pompey, we're alike in many ways. In many ways, I agree with you. But your request for new legion. It's all part of a greater plan for a greater democracy. My dream. My ambition, which may never be realized. I see a new state. With sweeping radical reform. I see, for example, a new economy functioning without the aid of warfare and slavery. It's your ambition that's feared in the Senate. Your ambition. Our ambition, Pompey. Yours, mine, Rome's, our ambition. But only to further Rome's destiny. Speak to them, Pompey. Speak not for Caesar, but for the glory of Rome itself. I shall do so. I promise you. Ave. Ave, Pompey. Do you trust him, Caesar? I trust that he'll deliver a message. Oh, Crassus. He'll speak against me. And when he does, we'll learn something from our esteemed Pompey. Now that I have informed the Senate of the measures I proposed at Ravenna for the welfare of the Republic, you must be advised that Caesar wants more legion. Oh, legion. Do you believe, Pompey, that Caesar needs these legions or that Caesar wants them? Cicero? Pompey. I would never have brought forward such a proposal. Where is Caesar? Why is he here to justify his request and his behavior? And yet, he's in Italy, Pompey tells us that he presided at the annual assizes. But he's not here, in Rome, at this assembly. Why? Hmm. Does he fear, perhaps, having to give us an account of his campaign in Britain? Or maybe he doesn't want to speak to us of the rebellion which has broken out in Gaul. Or by his silence, does he expect to hold himself beyond the authority of Rome? He is not here. But he asks for other legions. Caesar is undoubtedly a great military leader, gentlemen. But other duties don't exist for him. He spared neither friends nor money for his re-election as consul. He interested himself in the provinces of Gaul because of their riches. His villas bursting with treasures bear witness to it. To accuse Caesar unjustly, when you should be remembering, rather, in what brief a time he conquered Gaul and how his conquests have enriched the state treasuries with gold. He is incapable of acting out of self-interest and without due circumspection. In your firm loyalty to Caesar, a sentiment that does you great honor as his friend. Attention, Caius Opius, you may worsen his position. If he has always behaved with due circumspection, how then? Did he conduct the campaign in Britain in spite of the Senate's interdiction? Because Caesar values the interests of the Senate less than the grandeur of Rome. Prove it! Nobody. It's more certain than I am how close to Caesar's heart lies the glory of the Republic. But other legions mean stripping Rome of her defenses. We will pardon, O Pompey, a young Dacius Scribonius Curio for his impetuosity. And we'll ask him to reflect a little. It's the facts that count. Only the facts. Caesar has demonstrated he pursues no more than his own private ambitions. And if you remember, O Senators, when Caesar asked to be re-elected consul, I warned you. I repeat it to you, the words of Stella, who judging the character of the young Caesar said, 
In this man before me, I perceive a multiplication of the ambitions of Caius Marius. Now, I tell you, Caesar's attitude and his ambitions can bring about the ruin of the Republic. Caesar is above suspicion. If he is, let him appear in the Senate. Let him tell us why. He has bereaved thousands of citizens and endangered the very safety of Rome itself. Before you impose on Caesar the humiliation of defending himself before the Senate, it's only just that we consider his works and what kind of man he is. It isn't a question of punishment, but of affirming the power and authority of the state. I ask that Caius Julius Caesar be called back to Rome to render an account of his policies and actions. Back to Rome. Caesar's most trusted lieutenant and comes from an illustrious family. Be assured, all Rome will pay honors to you as the wife of Cicero's brother. But I don't love him. You love him. Love will come when, by living with him, you learn to appreciate and respect your husband. Suppose I love another. Another? Yes. Three years ago in Lucca, when Caesar attended the Assizes with Crassus and Pompey, we went along, too. It was the last time I saw Caesar. There I met Claudius Valerius, an officer in one of Caesar's legions. Yes, I remember him. We promised to love each other. And I swore I'd always be faithful. Just a youthful fancy, Publia. No, it's serious, Calpurnia. Because in all this time, I haven't forgotten him. And I know he hasn't forgotten me. Well, now you must forget him. You're not the first woman to be asked for a sacrifice like this. Julius Caesar needs an alliance with the family of Cicero. It's the only way of getting his friendship. You know that Caesar loves you like a daughter. And I do, too. Don't you think he's interested in your happiness? What is it, Clelia? Caius Ophius asked to speak to you. He says it concerns something very important. Let him come in. Stay, Publia. Greetings, Calpurnia. Ave Publia. What's happened? It's no use. Marcus Tullius Cicero was inflexible. The only thing I've been able to obtain is a two-day postponement of the Senate's decision. But the results of the voting are already obvious. They will order Caesar's return to Rome. Caesar would never deign to obey such an order. Never. Then that means civil war. I'll prepare for my departure, Calpurnia. I will go to Gaul and marry Quintus Cicero. I hope her sacrifice won't be made in vain. No, don't worry. See that Publia leaves today. And tomorrow I'll tell the news to Marcus Tullius Cicero. He has a strong feeling for his family. Then you'll see that he himself, the state's advocate, will maintain the necessity of keeping Caesar in Gaul. May the gods be with us. Caesar's orders are to hold. Hold at any cost. We will deliver your orders, Caesar. But you understand that none of us will return to Rome alive. All of Gaul is aflame. Every forest, every winding path, every tree you might say is an ambush. With the name of Vercingetorix on their lips, the Gauls rush to their deaths. And for every thousand killed, another thousand rises up. I know you well, my Publius. 
You've served with Caesar in the last four campaigns. Against the Veronte, the Rhine, Spain, and the Gulf of Maraban, Caesar. The Gulf of Mariban. <laughs> Faulty memory, old age catching up with all of us. Yes, the Gulf. I remember you well. You were the last man to leave. You swam ashore to safety. Like brave Horatius, only with an awkward style. I understand your words, Publius. I feel your weariness. Therefore, it will be decreed that you shall return to Rome with the rank of centurion. To be given a goodly pension and much land on which you can live the rest of your days in peace. And in memory of our past victories together over men and women. No, Caesar. I'm not finished yet. Don't humiliate me like this. The land can wait, old soldier, but we can't. Rise up. Publius, when you deliver Caesar's orders to your superiors, tell them Caesar promises victory. Be of good cheer. We shall drink to Minerva yet. We shall drink in Rome. Yes, you and I. Go now. Gods go with you. Amen, Amen Caesar. Pharaoh, wait. You must deliver a message to your consul, Quintus Cicero. Tell him my beloved ward, Publi, is making the journey to his camp. I want the marriage celebrated as quickly as possible. And happily so. Are they? Excuse me, Caesar. Yes, Claudia? But you, you're putting your ward in grave danger. Gaul, at this moment, is no place to take a pleasure trip. She'll be safe. She'll join Sabina's legion. She'll be safe. Caesar guarantees her safety. Are you sure? Really sure? Caesar guarantees. But the marriage... My poor, lonely Claudius. It's a necessity. A sad, political necessity. Caesar, you... You understand me. You know what it means to be lonely. Sooner or later, young Claudius, every man knows love. The utter loneliness. Because, you see, every man's alone. Livius, Fabius, Carinus. Julius Caesar to Caius Opius. Greetings. Your reply has given me much joy. I look forward to a happy and a profitable match for Puglia. My faithful Calpurnia, I greet you with love and affection. I, too, feel empty and warming after this long separation. Everything now seems to be working out in the best way possible. I knew I could count on you and our beloved ward, Puglia. Oh, go is divided into three parts. One of which the Belgae inhabit, the Aquitanian another, and those who in their own language are called Celts, in ours Gauls, the third. All of these differ from one another in language, custom, and law. If you were only here beside me, Calpurnia, my task would be much easier. It will be three years next month since I last held you in my arms. I grow old, Calpurnia. And tired. So infinitely tired. But as my weariness grows, so grows my love. Despite our ideological differences, Cicero is my friend, and I regard him highly. Do we 
impress upon him, Caius, the honesty of my feelings. I consider a marriage between our families as the purest of blessings. Yet remember, Calpurnia, the destiny of a soldier is death. This was one of my prayers, a little space of land with a garden near the house, a spring of living water, and a small wood beside. Is it true that Caesar isn't going back to Gaul? Why are you looking so thoughtful? Publius is going to marry Quintus Cicero. It's Caesar's will. You know how much I'm in love with her. Claudius Valerius, Caesar has sent for you. Carinus, the treatise on Gaul. Send the letters to Caius Opius and to my wife. Thank you. Now, Claudius, select ten of the best men. We're leaving. Where are we going? To Gaul. To Gaul? With only ten men? There's your answer, Claudius. So now we know the will of the gods. It's obvious. With Caesar in Italy, there'd be no stopping this in Jeterix. And now? Now we'll hit him when and where he least expects it. <laughs> you see, Claudius, this is how the history of a nation rests. In the hands of well-meaning political idiots. The Senate refuses me the legions I ask, and now <laughs> indirectly allows me to stop the revolt in Gaul. In bowing to the Senate, I protect the honor of Rome. And they put the lie to Pompey's threats. Who'll dare to refuse Caesar after he's conquered Vercingetorix? But how will we get through? The Gauls are everywhere. We'll pass through the Savenne Mountains. That's impossible. It just seems impossible. Come. Once inside, here is Marcus Labinius. Here, the legions of Titus. Quintus Cicero's camp here. Now, they converge in this direction. Together, they face the Gauls. What about the mountains? You put too much faith in mountains, and not enough in Caesar. And Quintus Sabinus? He will keep the road open from Italy for our beloved Publia. He will hold the position. Relax, my friend. Caesar's with you. I feel so disheartened. Has not Caesar called you his friend? For Caesar's orders, Quintus Sabinus. You must hold out with an entrenched camp until Caesar decides otherwise. Very well, Cornelius Crispus. You may go. I'll go to see about reinforcing the outposts. It's useless. We're not staying in the entrenched camp. But what about Caesar's orders? Caesar is not here. He doesn't know what our real situation is. But he must have prepared a plan, and we are part of his strategy. Even though closed in here as we are, we become annihilated. But it will be for the glory of Rome. Or the glory of Caesar. What are you going to do, Consul Quintus Sabinus? I shall order the Legion to prepare to leave for Italy and to burn the camp. But that's treason. Lucius Corta, I don't need to tell you that I'm the commander here and that a refusal to obey my orders is treason. When do you order the departure? Tomorrow morning at daybreak. Now that Caesar is in Italy, we shall destroy all the Roman legions. Yes, Chief. Person Jeterix, Astrid, the Queen of the Suevi is here. Bring her in. Go away.
Welcome, Astrid. What do you want? I've come to offer my alliance. Why do you, Queen of the Swavy, say you want to help me? Because I hate Rome. My people have suffered under the Romans. They killed my father and devastated my land. But I was too weak to oppose them all alone. War is rough, Astrid, and uncertain. The battlefield is no place for a woman. Cruelty and blood are the laws of war. I've known these horrors since I was a child. Let me stay at your side. Let me share the battle, Vercingetorix, to avenge my people. All right. I agree. Come on, you Roman dog. Talk if you value your life. Or I'll make you sorry you didn't kill in battle. Did you hear what I said? Spit it out! I said, spit it out! I swear, I'll have no peace till this same sword pierces through the breastbone of Julius Caesar. Greetings, Vercingetorix. Greetings, future ruler of Gaul. Peridomarus and I have come to assure you of the solidarity of our people. And where are your soldiers? Why didn't you bring me any cavalry? The forest is bursting with garlic warriors, but I haven't seen any aid away. We can't make a move without awakening the suspicions of the Romans. They think we're friends of theirs. I know. For years you've been fighting for Caesar. It's because of people like you that Gaul has been overrun and beaten. What do you want? Vercingetrix, when the Gauls elect you their king, what will become of our people, the Aedui? All the other chiefs have followed me without asking for anything. You haven't won yet, Vercingetrix. And we know Julius Caesar. Caesar is in Italy. When his consuls asked for aid, he sent word he couldn't move. Caesar is in Italy, and two days later, you find him in Belgium. You go to face him there, and he's already in Aquitania. He moves with the speed of the wind and the slyness of a fox. Caesar is very short of legions. He depends on our aid. We can be very useful to you the day when Julius Caesar believes us to be his friends. And instead, not only will we not help him, but we will turn our armed men against him. Think about it, Vercingetrix. All right. What do you ask? Give us the Roman gold that's stored in Jergovia. It's a high price. Equal to the value of our services. Which of you will remain as hostage to guarantee this pact? I claim the honor of remaining at your side, Vercingetorix. Now get out. Have you come to, to tell me your price or the aid you get? I don't ask for anything, Vercingetorix. You're the man who has defied Julius Caesar's power. And you're the one who will avenge all of us who've been oppressed and humiliated. You're beautiful, Astrid. Too beautiful for the horrors of a battlefield. 
It doesn't matter. It's enough to be by your side. I'll be able to overcome all obstacles, Vercingetorix. Sustained by my hate for Rome, my faith in you. You're beautiful, Astrid. I'm proud to be. If you like me this way. know that we're approaching our destination. Just a few miles more and we'll arrive at Quintus Cicero's fortress. Thank you. I was beginning to wonder if all was just endless. For the last three nights, the mosquitoes haven't let me get a wink of sleep. <laughs> Please, Clelia, will you hand me that mirror? Thank you. If we're approaching our destination, it's our duty to make ourselves beautiful. That's how Gaul will be strong, by its laws and by its sword. And you will be our king, Vercingetorix. Only if the people want me to be. Vercingetorix, valuable prize has fallen into our hands. Who 
Who are you, woman? I'm a Roman citizen. What is your name? Publia. Caesar's ward. <laughs> How is it that Caesar has allowed you to come to Gaul? Is he so sure of himself? You might have been killed by my men, you know. I would have preferred to die, rather than to fall into your hands. To die? Why? You're too beautiful to die. Did you capture her? Yes. I entrust her to you. She's to be treated like a guest, and not a hair of her head is to be harmed. Yes, Chief. Or you'll lose your own head. Go! <laughs> Why didn't you kill her? You don't kill hostages. And this one's valuable. There's no alternative. Person Jetrix demands our surrender for Publius' freedom. Life for life, I'll offer myself in exchange. You, Marcus Laborius, will take command. We could try a sortie and face them on the field, taking them by surprise. No, it would be madness and useless destruction. The example of Quintus Sabinus should teach us something. Listen, Quintus Cicero, there's that signal again. They've been repeating it for an hour. the prisoner we captured two days ago. It must be very important if they keep repeating it. We'll force him to tell us what this signal means. What is the meaning of these calls? Speak! Didn't you hear my question? Speak! What are they saying, sir? What are they saying? Julius Caesar has returned to Gaul. He has joined Brutus' legions and won a great victory in Alvernia. The city of Avaricum has been occupied by the Romans. Caesar's returned! There's no more uncertainty now. Tell the men what is happening and give them the order to hold out at all costs. Long live Caesar! Long live Caesar! <laughs> mean famine for our people. No, it means that Caesar won't be able to get any supplies. Patrol each river ford and mountain pass. I want to be informed of every move of the Romans. Now go. It's turned out just as Viridomorus and I predicted. Caesar has tricked all of us. Do you have any doubts about my victory? No. We have faith in you. 
Only I am convinced that in the moment for action, our aid will be much more important than you think. I salute you, Vercingetrix, and await your orders. Centurion Decimus Silas of Marcus Labienus Legion. Yes. Marcus Labienus awaits your orders. He informs you his food supply is short. The enemy has destroyed everything before us. Since he cannot proceed by force of arms, he wishes to starve them out. Well, that's strategy. It's tomorrow what he destroys today. Where will he get it? Where did you see combat? In Britain. And at the River Seine against the Parisi. Not without victory. No, Caesar. And now? I see. Are you ready to leave immediately? Yes, Caesar. Proceed back to your camp with the orders for Labienus that he's to break camp and to march to Lutetia for further instructions there. Yes, Caesar. Wait. Go. The best award for valor is better than that for caution. Thank you. Stetinius. Prepare to march at dawn. Send in the centurion, Valerius. You sent for me, Caesar? Yes, Claudius. You'll deliver this message to Quintus Cicero. To Quintus Cicero? I am. Uh... Quintus Cicero. His marriage to Publia is no longer politically expedient. <sighs> Thank you, Caesar. I'm happy to carry out these orders. Ave, Caesar. Ave. Father to go. Tonight we'll sleep in the fortress of Quintus Cicero. You'll permit me, Centurion. I don't believe it's rest you're looking forward to. What do you mean? Just that Publius' presence in Quintus Cicero's fortress has fed our horses more than was necessary. For some time now, you've been growing more impertinent. Do you think it's wrong to love a beautiful young girl? Certainly not.
What's that cry? Sounds like an animal. Maybe so, but we'd better stay alert. I never studied. It's in Greek. Uh, wait. Maybe the Roman gal knows. I've already thought of that. Rodent, bring in the prisoner. Maybe there's someone here in Alasia who knows Greek. Come here. Ruby. Goliath. You know each other. All the better. We found this message on the prisoner. It's from Caesar and it's written in Greek. Translate it. I don't know Greek. All the Roman patricians know this language. If you're interested in him, you can either save him or watch him die by slow torture. I told you, I don't know Greek. Rodin, go to work. for the rest of your life in memory of this day. Now speak! No! Stop it! Stop it! Let her go, Bradus. Promise to spare his life. Don't speak, Rubilia. Don't speak! Can't help it. <laughs> no, I can't help it. <laughs> Julius Caesar to Quintus Cicero. Greetings. Ten days after the new moon, I shall leave the fortress. Join me with your legions on the road that leads to Jagovia. <laughs> Caesar and Jagovia! <laughs> <laughs> and Jagovia!
Inform Caesar that all is calm. sign yet of the consul and his men. May it be the God's will that nothing's happened to Claudius Valerius. It's too silent. What shall we do, Caesar? We'll advance to the outskirts of Jagovia. Forward! to nothing. We cannot continue the battle. Our legions are decimated. Titus Arius must withdraw. Sound the retreat. The rest of you, follow me. Caesar, Titus Arius has withdrawn from the battle according to your orders. He'll gain considerable distance under the cover of night. And Marcus Cato? His sacrifice permitted our troops to withdraw. Join Titus Arius and tell him to make camp on the other bank of the river. I'll send in further orders. Fabius. Marcus Labienus must join us at Elysia. Fabius. Tell Eporidorix to proceed immediately to the plain of Elysia. Dorentius, 
I dissect this as a legion must make a forced march to the Elysian Plain. And you, Mark Antony? Yes, Caesar. How many men are left in your legion? Two hundred, Caesar. Two hundred. They will come with us to Quintus Cicero's fortress. Their Syngetrix will soon know the legions are on the march. He won't be able to attack all of them. So he'll concentrate all his strength in Alicia, and there we will attack. But the food supply, how will we feed all these men when they're gathered together? It will suffice. This week will surely decide the outcome of the campaign. Don't fear, Mark Antony. You're with Caesar and his star. think that you hated me, that you would feel contempt for me. I did it for you. When I saw them torturing you like that, I... Oh. I have loved you and I still love you too much, Publia, to bear you any ill will. But now we are divided by these shouts of joy. That means Caesar's defeat, the defeat of Rome. No, Claudius, you're wrong. Caesar is not defeated. And Vercingetorix's victory is only a thing of the moment. What do you mean? Caesar is safe. Tell me to forgive me. Publia, Caesar has given you back to me. He will win. I'm sure of it now. And we'll return to Rome. And the sun will shine on the Capitoline Hill when you walk up it. At my side. Where Claudia is. There is the For the rest of our lives. Yes. Publia, Publia, the moon has risen and lights up the whole camp. We must go back before we are discovered.
my distinguished ally. Bear witness to this, Quintus. It will be a long day, but we've had long days before and long nights. <laughs> this in Jedrix is enclosed here in the city of Elysia. He will never submit to a siege. That's why we've made the defensive measures that you have seen. Two days. Time enough to allow the Legion of Titus to join us. We hope to give us sufficient strength to face an attack. It's going to be a long day. You'll be an hourly communication by messenger. In case of emergency, inform me that's all. Out there. Quintus, the word. Well, my friend, where are your men concentrated? Here, in the forest. The cavalry of the Aedui awaits your orders, Caesar. Hmm. On signal, you'll bring them into the heaviest fight. Yours may be the decisive action. It will be our glory to have contributed to yours, Caesar. I salute you. What do you say, Quintus? You trust him? He's our ally. Yes. Well, Quintus, then why does Caesar trust the enemy at all? You'll see what kind of an ally. Good news. Information that Publi is alive. I know, Caesar. It's difficult for me to say. Don't hold Caesar to the word he once gave you. Thank you, old friend. You dare to come before me, Bella Barkin. I asked you for 10,000 infantry and 2,000 horsemen. How many have you brought me? Answer me! 2,000 horsemen burst in death ranks. More my people couldn't give me. The war that I am fighting isn't for me, it's for the liberty of Gaul! Cut off his right hand and send him back to his country to show how Vercingetorix punishes traitors. No! You can't do this to me! No! You can't do it! No! I wanted you to be here and see with your eyes what my power is. Almost all Gaul is represented here by its chiefs. Each one represents a tribe. The Alerci, the Caderci, the Cabali, the Velani, the Parisi, and a hundred or so more. What could Caesar do against all these? Now that I've seen, let me retire. You know, I like that proud air of yours. You only lost it once, and that was for love. <gasps> Away from them? We couldn't bear that chanting. 
and the rituals of those barbarians. Did you hear what I said? Get out! Go. Why did you run away? A religious ceremony dedicated to your army doesn't concern you. I am a Roman. I've liked you right from the beginning, Pope. Since as a hostage, I have no more use for you. Not only will the gods give me victory, but also one of Caesar's women. First and Jedrick. Who dares? Eporidorix wants to speak to you. It's urgent. Eporidorix, let him in. Vercingetorix, Caesar is expecting the legion of Titus Artius to arrive within the next two days. I myself was present at the meeting in Caesar's tent. Five thousand Adui are prepared for your command. I counsel you to attack before Caesar has united all his forces. Call all the chiefs together to meet in council. And you will be the prize given to the winner. you want, Astrid. I hate you, Rowan. Because you robbed me of Vercingetorix's love. I hate him as much as you love him. Your feelings don't interest me. I offer you your freedom. Show me how. I'll come with you to the walls of the city. A horse will be there. You'll soon be far away. From Vercingetorix. I'll accept only if the prisoner Claudius Valerius comes with me. It's all the same to me. waiting for you outside. Thanks. I didn't do it for you. Remember, even if they should torture you, you don't know anything. You could count on me.
about Clelia? I couldn't bring her with me. She insisted on sacrificing herself so we could escape unnoticed. Poor Clelia. Claudia, the aide we have betrayed Caesar, and first and Jetterix will attack before the arrival of Titus Arthur. How can we inform Caesar? We've been riding for hours. If we manage to overtake Titus Artius, Caesar will be safe. May the gods assist us. We'll hurry to his camp. We'll gallop. Yes, quickly. Marcus Labienus on the left flank. Titus Sextus on the right flank. The cavalry behind the hill. And you at the head of the slingsmen. Albania's troops are resisting for the glory of Rome. Caesar, Titus Sextus asks permission to counterattack. No, the moment hasn't come. The signal to the Aedui.
Harvey, give the signal. Cease his orders. Very well. Send for me, Caesar. Go to the right to help Titus Artius. Did you give the signal to the aid to eat? Yes. What better dream could you have? I was running away. They crept up on me. Look at my chest. It was always facing the enemy. You will be rewarded. Thank you, Caesar.
take all night to make account of our casualties. We were betrayed. The aid we went over to the storm's side. This is the end. Mark end. If we could only hold out, maybe tomorrow. Titus Hart, here's wagon, here's supply. He's far away. He won't arrive. It's a night without stars. A night of my defeat. But the victor won't know how to use his victory. Only Rome. Only Rome. And each respect. Respect for the law. We point the way, and. To tomorrow. Why didn't you use the reserves in today's battle, Caesar? Tomorrow, they will be needed. So, the Aedui have betrayed us. That's why it's necessary to hurry to aid Caesar. Guys, marshals. At your orders. Prepare for our departure immediately. We must join Caesar as quickly as possible. The baggage, wagons, and everything heavy must be left behind. Go. We leave in an hour. Go now. Second and third legion. Forward! 
right flank is giving way. Fill in with the troops from the center. Marius strengthen the extreme right. The cavalry to the far left as reinforcement. Labienus, go to Mark Antony's aid. You, Brutus, with the rest of the cavalry. I'll join my legionaries. Caesar, here is your triumph.
I have fought for the liberty of Gaul, and I have lost. I ask no charity for myself, but clemency for my people. Forward, march! I have fought and won, but I haven't conquered over man's spirit, which is indomitable, like the clouds. 